Well, good morning and welcome to Cornerstone Church Online, where we exist to love our God, to grow in our faith, and to serve each other. Merry Christmas. We are in the week of Christmas. We've been leading up to this. We've been excited about this. And in five short days, we will be celebrating the birth of our Savior. So thank you for being here this morning. We have some announcements that I want to let you know about. Uh, first of all, we are having a Christmas Eve service here at the church at 7 o'clock. We're also going to be live streaming that service as well. So if you can't make it in person, please join us on our live stream. We would love to interact with you. We love to celebrate with you on Christmas Eve. And then next Sunday, the Sunday after Christmas, we will not be having an in-person service on Sunday morning. We will obviously still be meeting online, but we will not be having in-person services just for this one Sunday, next Sunday, the Sunday after Christmas. We will just be joining together online, so, so make sure you make plans for that and stay tuned uh, to worship with us this next Sunday online. Cornerstone, Cornerstone Kids, I have a very exciting announcement for you. Our Cornerstone Kids is going to be moving into a virtual format starting on January 10th. January 10th is a Sunday and every Sunday at 2 o'clock we are going to be having a virtual Cornerstone Kid. It's a live uh, kids program that you can watch from home, that you can interact with. And we are excited. There's been a lot of work for, uh, from Bill and Mia Whitaker about putting that together. So we are excited to, to offer that to you. Uh, so there'll be more information about that in the, in the next coming weeks. But parents, pay close attention to this. Cornerstone Kids is going to be meeting virtually starting on January 10th. There are a couple of announcements below me right now. There are no Bible studies happening this week because of the holidays. Um, and, and if you uh, if, if you want to take this this week maybe to refocus yourself and come back uh, to next week for our Bible studies, that'd be greatly appreciated. We are excited about what God is doing within our Bible studies. So I encourage you to, to be involved with that. We're also looking into ways that we make uh, all those men's Bible study, the ladies' Bible study, all done virtually as well uh, on, on Zoom so that you can join us if you're not able to be here in person. So again, there's more information about that as well. Well, let's get into it. Let's get into our, 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 our new series, our very short series, simply called Missing Peace.
right, so we are beginning a two-part, uh, I'll call it a mini-series, simply called Missing Peace. It's going to be today, and then it's going to be concluded on our Christmas Eve service. So that's another incentive for you to either be here in person on Christmas Eve or obviously to tune into our live stream. But either way, I hope that you can join us as we talk about this important topic of peace. Peace on earth, missing peace in our lives. If, if, if peace has ever been needed in any time in history, it would be in the year 2020. There has been so much turmoil, uh, so, so, much, so many things have happened in, in our world in 2020 that, man, I wish for peace, and I, I know that you probably wish for peace as well. But let's talk about wishes for just a second. We are also in, in the Christmas season right now. Uh, a lot of us have, have done a lot of Christmas shopping, or in my case, our, our wife, my wife has done a lot of Christmas shopping, right, for our family, getting us ready to celebrate and, and to have joy with each other. And if you're like my family, um, we, do, uh, we do virtual wish lists. So we go online, we fill out, fill out a list of things that, that we would like for Christmas, and we send that out to, our, to loved ones, to each other. And, and, and that, is, that is a way, a baseline for us to figure out uh, what does so-and-so want for Christmas? What does so-and-so want for Christmas? And that raises a question that I want to ask and present to you this morning. If you were to have one wish, one wish in your life, what would that wish be? And no, you can't just do the old cliche, I wish for more wishes. No, you have to choose one thing. What is the one thing that you would add to your life? Some of you might say, I, would, I wish for, for more money. I wish to be wealthy. Hey, that's not a, a bad wish. With wealth comes the opportunity to give and, and to continue the ministry of Christ. And so, hey, listen, if, you, if your heart is in the right place, wish for more wealth. That's fine. So some of you might wish for more money, more wealth. Some of you might wish uh, for happiness in your life. Uh, some of you might, right now are just sitting in a place and you just don't feel any kind of contentment and happiness. And you just say, man, Pastor, I would just want to have happiness in my life. Some of us are wishing maybe for our relationships to be in a better place. Maybe it's a relationship with the spouse. Maybe it's a relationship with our kids. Maybe it's a relationship with our, our parents, right? Some of us might wish that we were just had more healthy relationships. But if there's one thing that I think that we could all agree on, and I've already talked about it, is this concept and idea of peace. I want peace on earth. I want everybody to, to get along in this age of turmoil where everybody's fighting and arguing and, and you can't have an opinion without 20 people arguing about your opinion. If I look at a white wall and say, hey, that, that wall is white, someone has to say, no, that's eggshell white. I mean, we, we, we just draw contention and, and, and fight with each other over the silliest little things sometimes. So I, I absolutely would wish for peace. But it brings me to an example and a story in the Bible. And we talk about this idea of peace. If you remember, we're in the, in the week of Christmas right now, if you remember the angels' announcements, when the angels came to the shepherds and they were announcing the birth of Jesus, do you remember what they said here? They said, glory to God on highest, and then what did they say after that? Peace on earth. It continues, and later on in the New Testament, we see this word peace used a lot. Actually, the Apostle Paul will a lot of times start his letters by saying, grace and peace be with you. See, it's unique and, 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 um, and curious. Of all the different words that Paul could have used, he used grace and peace be with you. Peace is a concept that is talked about Old Testament, New Testament. It's talked about throughout Scripture. And it's something, as we talk about missing peace, it's something that we need to really pay attention to this morning. If you were to wish for one thing, would it be peace? Would it be peace in your life? Would it be peace in your relationships? Would it be peace on this earth? Would it be peace this morning? You see, peace is that thing that, that grounds us all, the thing that if we were to really look inside of our lives and really have one wish, I would think that most of us would wish for peace, contentment in our lives, contentment in our hearts, contentment in our relationships. So you can wish for a lot of different things. You can wish to have all the money in the world, and maybe you could have all the money in the world, but if you don't have peace in your heart, then you don't have anything. You could wish to have all these relationships, you know, a, a marriage. You could wish to have a good relationship with your kids. You can have a good relationship with your friends and coworkers. But if you don't have peace in your heart, that peace is that, that those relationships are only going to get you so far. You see, our world is full of tension. It's full of fear. It's full of anxiety. It's full of a lot of unknowns. 
And, and some of us might wake up every day and just and try to avoid the news at all costs, try to avoid social media, try to avoid the conversations at work. You don't even want to know what's going on in this world anymore because every day we wake up and there's something else more devastating, something else more tragic that is happening. And you're just hoping and wanting for peace. I gotta tell you something this morning. The title today is Peace Even Possible in 2020. Here's a little, here's the here's a uh, spoiler for you. You know, and not that I want you to avoid the rest of the of the message this morning, but peace is possible. But we need to understand the source of where true peace comes from, or where true contentment comes from in our lives. And we can't be seeking it and trying to find peace in all these other things. Peace comes from one person. Peace comes from God and God alone. And peace came to this earth through His Son, Jesus Christ. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. So if you really want peace this morning, we need to talk about where that peace comes from and then make sure that our hearts are lined up, our hearts are ready to, to be able to evaluate our lives and to put our hope and put our trust and put our peace in the one that really can provide it to us. We're going to go this morning to the book of Isaiah. And here's the context. We're going to Isaiah 26. Here's the context of what's going on in the book of, the, of Isaiah. Uh, the people of Israel during this time, they're in a season of fear, of unsettledness. Uh, they're in a season of just, they don't know what's going on. The world around them is kind of chaotic. Does that sound familiar to you right now? It actually parallels what we're experiencing in this world uh, pretty closely. So I think the people of Israel and Isaiah's writing here, I think he understands. In a way, he understands what we've been going through even in this year. So let's read what he says starting in verse 1. He says, In that day, everyone in the land of Judah will sing this song. It will say, Our city is strong. We are surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. Number uh, Verse 2, Upon the gates... To all who are righteous, allow, open this gate, excuse me, to all who are righteous, allow the faithful to enter. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. Let's pray this morning. God, we pray for peace in our, in our world. God, we pray for peace in our lives. God will help us to recognize and to understand that peace, only true peace, only comes through you. God, help us to be able to fix our eyes and fix our minds on that truth this morning as we study in your word. God bless us this morning. Amen. I love the words of Isaiah in verse 3 of, 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 of chapter 26. Again, he says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. I love that idea that, that, that's saying perfect peace. What is perfect peace? See, many of us are familiar with imperfect peace in our lives. It will say things like, God, I'm good. God, I, you know, I wake up every day, I'm struggling, but man, I'm trying to trust in you. And then at times we turn and say, God, where are you? And, and I, I go back to even the book of Psalms and I talk about David a lot. I love David's heart. I, I love the way that David wrote. And I love the examples that we can learn from David. He would have one chapter celebrating God, thanking God for all his provision, thanking God for forgiving him everything he had. And in the very next chapter, he would write, God, woe is me. God, where are you? God, why didn't you save me in this situation? See, that is a habit and an imperfect peace in our lives. And some of us do that. We have an understanding of who God is. We have an understanding of the peace that he can bring to our lives. But because of our human nature, we sometimes live with imperfect peace. We don't constantly keep peace in our hearts and peace in our minds. And when struggles come up, Instead of relying and trusting on God and having contentment in our lives, knowing that God's going to see us through that struggle, we fall back into our human nature, human tendency, and we cry out to God, God, where are you in this? I, I love this. God never has never moved from his position of authority. God has never swayed in his promises to love us and to protect us and to provide for us. The thing that is swayed, the thing that is moved is us. That's an imperfect peace that is not fully trusting God in the way that we should trust God. And that's what Isaiah is talking to here. Maybe you can relate to that. But he says, you can, we will keep us in perfect peace, kept in perfect peace. I love, if you go back to the, to the Hebrew, the word peace actually is the, Hebrew, uh, is the word shalom, shalom. 
It, and it means it, it was a greeting. You would actually greet somebody, say shalom. You would say hello to them. You would say peace to you. And it was a, it's a beautiful word, and it's a word that means it means wholeness. It means completeness. Completeness. It means fullness of peace. Shalom. It is peace with God. It is it is peace with God. It was it is peace with others. It is peace within yourself. Shalom. And we learn this in Isaiah, in the original word in Isaiah, be kept in shalom, shalom. It actually repeats twice in the original text, which literally means we keep you in perfect peace, peace. Shalom, shalom. It's a double portion. It gives us peace and more. To be clear, and to help us understand, peace and having peace and contentment in our lives does not mean that we are going to uh, not have trouble, not have difficulties in our lives. It doesn't mean we're not going to have any problems in our lives. If you've been a believer long enough, you understand that you can have a peace that surpasses understanding and still wake up the next morning and have struggles and difficulties and problems that pop up that, that cause us to, to at times doubt, right? And not trust God in the way that we should. So just to be clear, peace doesn't mean we're constantly going to be uh, content, right? But the idea of peace is that we every day commit ourselves to fully trusting and relying on God. I love this. Peace isn't found in the absence of problems. So let me say that again. Peace isn't found in the absence of problems. Peace is not just that we don't have any problems in our lives because like I just said, you're going to have problems. You're going to have difficulties. You're going to have struggles. You're going to have relationships that are crumbling. You're going to have uh, people in your life that get sick. You're going to have struggles, financial struggles, emotional struggles. You're going to have those things in your life. So peace isn't about the absence of problems. Here's what true peace is. True peace is found in the presence of God. That's where we find true peace. Peace in God's presence. It's God's perspective. It's God's assurance. Then even in the middle of the problems of our life, we can have a shalom, shalom, a peace, peace, a perfect peace, as Isaiah tells us. Let me tell you where, where peace, the battle for peace begins. The battle for peace begins in our minds. It begins in our thoughts. It begins in the way that we process struggles and problems in our lives. So the battle for peace begins on our minds. You know, a lot of us, we have wars going on in our mind. We have, oh, as, as, a, as a believer, if, you, if you're a follower of Christ, you, you have a peace in your heart. You know that God's going to provide for you, but your human nature struggles against that. It forgets constantly that God is in control. I can say that this morning with assurance because I have struggled that with myself in my life. I have, I have known Christ in my heart for a very, very long time of my life. I was raised in, in a Christian home. I was raised with parents that raised me to understand what it is to trust in God. I've seen God work. I've seen God do miracles. I've seen God provide in every area of my life. I've seen Him provide in areas of my family's life, in my friend's life. I've seen God work. I know what He can do. Yet there are times that I still struggle with peace and contentment in my life. There are still times that I struggle with this idea of a perfect peace, the shalom, shalom. Because it, the battle for peace, it begins in our minds. Verse 3 again. I'm going to read this in, in a couple different translations here. In verse 3 again it says, and this is the NLT translation, it says, You will keep in perfect peace all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Focus on that word fixed for a moment. And then we're going to take it to the NIV version of that verse. It says this, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast. Fixed on God. You'll keep us in perfect peace for those who will have our minds fixed on you, focused on you, directed towards you. And then, again, the other version says, Whose minds are steadfast, that are, are steady, that are level-headed, that are, they're not being distracted by the problems, but seeing through the problems and seeing through to the peace that God provides. You notice Isaiah didn't say peace is, is reliance on, on, on uh, all the things in this world around you. You'll find peace and contentment in, in relationships. You'll find peace and contentment uh, uh, if you have a lot of money. You'll find peace if you have a, a good rapport within your community. You have peace if, if you're well known and you're famous. See, peace isn't found in any of those things, but if you look at the world today, 
The world tells you in order for you to have peace and be successful and, and have all these things, you need to have money, you need to have, uh, you need to have some, some fame, you, you need to have uh, uh, some responsibilities in this world and people see you at a higher level. That is not what brings us peace. I can point you to many a celebrity, many an, an athlete, many a famous musician who have all the fame, all the money, everything material in this world, yet they lack peace in their lives. So it is not those, those, those financial things, it is not those, those, um, it's not those extra things in our lives that brings us peace. It's having our minds steadfast. It's having our minds fixed on the things of God. What is your mind fixed on? What consumes your thoughts? That word fixed in the original Hebrew is actually the word samach. And, and the definition and how that word is actually defined is, is simply this, is to lean completely, to fully rest oneself on something. It is complete to focus, in other words, on something, to fix your mind. And you'll be kept in perfect peace when your mind is leaning on God. Perfect peace when your thoughts are resting on God's unfailing promises to us. So again, I ask that same question. What is your mind fixed on? When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing that your mind is drawn to during the day when, you, when you're busy at work or busy at school or busy at home? What is your mind drawn to? When you go to sleep at night, what's the first thing that your brain starts telling you? What is your mind fixed on? Is it focused on financial struggles? Financial worries? Is, is it focused on the political division that is happening in this country? Is it focused on the racial tensions that are happening in this country? Is it focused on COVID fears? On, on, is there going to be a vaccine? Is the vaccine safe for me and my family to take? Uh, is, this, is this illness going to continue to spread and shut down the world around us? Are we going to be able to see our family for Christmas even in 2021? I mean, our fears can drive us and our fears can start to take over our minds. But when we fix our minds on the things of God, that is when we start to realize and fully, uh, fully rely on God, that's when we understand what the idea of true, perfect peace, shalom, shalom, really is. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, and I love this, this section of scripture, it says, Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise, then the God of peace will be with you. There's our scripts right there for how we fix our, what we should be fixing our minds on, or what we should be filtering our thoughts through. Whatever things are true and honorable and right and pure and holy and lovable and admirable, those are the things that we need to fix our minds on. And then we will be given this peace as the Bible describes this peace that surpasses our ability to understand, to comprehend it then the God of peace will be with you. Let me tell you this morning, remind you this morning, again, about who our God is. And I'm reminding myself as well because I have struggled with having contentment in my life at times. I struggle with truly and, 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 and totally fixing my mind on the things of God. When struggles and problems and difficulties come into my life, I'm the first to admit that I don't always fix my mind on God. To find that perfect peace. I try to find that peace in other ways. And as I struggle, this, if, I, if I have struggles, I know that you have struggles. I know all of us have struggles. And that is why the Bible is very clear that we need to fix our thoughts and fix our mind on the things of God. Let me remind you of who your God is. Maybe you need to hear this this morning. First of all, my God is good. My God has always been good. His promises are true and were true for the people of Israel in the Old Testament, and His promises are still true and relevant for us today. He is the provider of all our needs. He is the way maker, the miracle worker, right? God is a, is a God whose promises are true. And let me tell you something else about God. His word has never failed us nor forsaken us. His word never fails. He never leaves us. He never leaves us. When I am lost in my life, when I wake up and, I, and, and my, I'm, my mind is just struggling with maybe finding some peace and contentment, my God is my guide to get me back to experiencing perfect peace. When I am weak, He is made strong. When I am hurting, 
He is my comforter. Nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Let me say that again. Nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. I fix my thoughts, I fix my mind, I fix my eyes upon God. When struggles and problems come into our lives, we will find peace, we will find contentment, we will find shalom, shalom, perfect peace, peace in double portion. When we fix our minds on the things of Christ. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives, and do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Jesus said, my peace, I, Jesus, I give to you. He's not saying I'm going to give you a peace, right? He says, I'm going to give you my peace, my peace I give to you. There's a story in the, in the New Testament, a very famous story about uh, when Jesus was, when, when they were on the ship and the storm, the huge storm came up and was tossing and turning the ship and the disciples were on, on the deck of the ship and they were terrified that their whole world is going to end. They're terrified that they were going to be drowned in, in, this, in this monster storm. And if you remember the, the story, Jesus was sleeping in the ship. I'll remind you what happened here. So Jesus is sleeping. They are, they are freaking out. There's this terrible storm that's happening out, and Jesus is basically taking a nap during this time. Let me tell you reality, and you, you know that story, you know that they finally they woke Jesus up, and Jesus is kind of like, oh, what's, what's happening? Oh, the storm, you're worried about the storm? And then he calmed the storm, like immediately, just spoke a word, and boom, it was done. There are actually two storms that are occurring during that time. There was a storm that was happening on the outside and in the context of where they were at, they're on that sea, right? And the, and the, the storm was, was raging around them. But there was also another storm, a second storm that was happening inside of their souls. See, that internal storm was having fear, anxiety, pure terror, forgetting that the maker of the heaven and earth was sleeping in that ship with them, forgetting that they allowed their fears to overcome them. They were dealing with an internal storm in their life. Jesus in that situation said, peace. He said, peace, be still. He got to the, to the deck of that ship. He looked around and he saw the fear and, 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 the, and the worry and anxiety in their face. He said to the storm, peace, be still. God still speaks that way to us in our lives. We have these internal storms on the outside. We might even appear to be okay. We might have a smile on our face. Someone asks, hey, how's your day going? We say, oh, it's great. But inside we're dealing with internal struggles. God still speaks to us in the same way. He says to us, peace, be still. Know that I am God. Know that I give you a perfect peace when your minds are fixed on me, focused on me, reliant on me. And this morning, just reading a book of Philippians again, four, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your, heart, your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's the peace of God that's going to give us a perfect peace in our lives. The world can't give us that peace, no matter what we try to do to gather that peace from, from the world. It can't give it to us. But let me tell you some, something else. The world also can't take your peace away. And it's going to try to do that. The world's going to say, you need to be worried about this. You need to be struggling with this. You need to have anxiety about this. But perfect peace is given by God through Christ Jesus in the Holy Spirit that's in our lives. The world can't give you that peace and the world can't take that peace away. Let's bow our heads this morning. Remind you something again. Peace isn't found in the absence of problems. Peace is found in the presence of God Almighty. Where do you try to get your peace? Where are you trying to get contentment in your life? 
And if it's anywhere other than finding it through Christ Jesus, you are not going to find perfect peace. You might find some band-aids. You might find some temporary things that make you happy and bring some joy to your life. But joy eternal comes from truly understanding who God is and what God has done in your life and fixing your thoughts on Him, and giving your life, surrendering yourself, saying, God, I am a sinner in need of salvation. Forgive me of my sins. Come live within me. God, give me shalom, shalom, God, perfect peace in my life. And if that's you this morning, as your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, maybe you're watching me, it doesn't matter. I want you to hear me this morning. If you've never asked Christ to come into your life, you are never going to experience the peace that I am talking about. And believer, if there has been a time and place in your life where you've surrendered yourself, you've asked for forgiveness of your sins, I'm going to remind you that daily, daily you need to put your thoughts and fix your minds on God. Every struggle, every problem, every difficulty, every fear, every anxiety, every relationship that goes sour, every struggle that you have, peace is given in those situations through God. Let's pray this morning. God, we pray for perfect peace. God, there's missing peace in our lives. There's missing peace in this earth. God, that's only peace that comes through you. So God, we pray for your peace that surpasses all of our understanding this morning. God, I pray for each one here that is watching and listening, that they will find perfect peace in their lives. And they will realize, God, that that peace only comes through you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who we celebrate the birth this week. He brought peace to earth, peace to all men. God, thank you for that gift. God, thank you for that peace. Help us to rely on your perfect peace. Amen.